So, we are going to jump into sprint spikes now. So sprint spikes are designed to be extremely rigid. That's what differentiates them from mid-distance and distance spikes. The spike plate usually goes along the whole bottom of the shoe and it almost forces you into an anatomically correct sprinting position. And it also is generally more reinforced on the top to allow all of your force to be moving you forward opposed to side to side or things like that. So starting down here with some more entry level spikes, sprint spikes, uh, we have the Saucony Spitfire. So this has a really soft heel to it and it feels a little more like a training shoe. It's designed for sprinting specifically. Um, however, you could certainly use it for a couple different events up to 400 meters. Um, the Zoom Rival is in that same category. This is the Zoom Rival Sprint. Um, the Zoom Rival series has been around for a long time. Um, it's a lot of people to go to when you have student athletes that are trying to find their place in the sport of track and field and really figure out which event is right for them. So the Adidas Sprint Star is one of the entry level spikes that actually has a three quarter length spike plate opposed to a half. Um, it's kind of moving into and bridging the gap between a, a mid-level and an entry level and a high level spike. This is more of a mid-level sprint spike. Kind of in that same category we have the Under Armour Kick Sprint which again has a three quarter length spike plate opposed to a half like the Rival and the Spitfire. Um, it's got a nice wide toe box and fits a lot of different feet very well. The second Under Armour spike is the Speed Form Sprint Pro. Um, it has a very shiny spike plate to it. But this is the first one that we see with this full length spike plate to it. Um, opposed to last year's model, this one features a knit upper. And again, that is just super comfortable and designed to reduce our weight a little bit. The New Balance Vazi Sigma is designed with a BOA lacing system. So you can see that it twists on here. So what that is used for is holding your foot down to this full length spike plate. So that way you don't have to worry about your foot coming away because your foot coming away from the bottom of the shoe ultimately equals less force going forward. The Nike Zoom Jaw Fly is designed for, specifically designed for 200 meters. Um, it features this cross um, anatomical lacing system. Um, they also have started to utilize in both this shoe and its higher end counterpart, the uh, Superfly Elite, this 3D printed spike plate. Um, that's actually taken from Allison Felix's 400 meter specific spikes. Um, and it actually reduces our weight a little bit while also uh, giving us that firm and rigid feel that you look for in a sprint spike. Um, the biggest difference between all, both of those is mainly going to be weight and the versatility of sprinting events. So the last one I have is the Adidas um, Accelerator, Adi Zero Accelerator. So similar to the bow lacing system, this one has a strap across the toe that's designed to hold your foot down to the spike plate and make sure all of your force is going forward and not anywhere else. Um, the biggest difference between these higher end sprint spikes and our more entry level spikes is going to be how much they can be used for, or what events they can be used for. The higher end, um, your Sigma or Vazi Sigma, your Jawfly, your Superfly Elite are going to be specifically used for 100 up to 400, whereas you could get away with a long jump or maybe even a high jump in some of our lower end sprint spikes. Oh, my God.